Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video we will learn how to prevent data loss when you do forced manual failover to DR site asynchronous replica. Let's get started. Imagine we have a G cluster whose secondary replica spread across two networks, network A and network B. Node 2 here he is located in another network and works as a DR solution and it is a synchronous commit mode. We understand that asynchronous replica never becomes synchronized with the primary replica. It could let behind at any point time. Suppose we have two records committed in primary replica, record 1 and record 2. Record 1 has been synced to node 2 after a while, however, before record 2 was synced, network A went down suddenly due to sudden outage. Right? To make your application available faster as DBA, you log in to DR node, do forced manual failover and make this node 2 as a primary. Please pay attention, we did not manage to sync record 2 at that time yet. During this time your application added another record to primary, which is record 3. Right? Then network A comes back and net node 1 becomes online again. It will transfer itself as a secondary. As a result, it will match its transactions with primary. It will undo any non-existing transaction, which is record 2, and redo any existing transaction in primary, which is record 3. Did you sense it? We are losing record 2 in this case. In this video, we will learn how to prevent and recover this kind of data loss. Let's go. I'm using SQL Server 2019 RTM version for this demonstration. First, I have AG cluster with two nodes, AG 2019 SQL VM1 called and SQL VM2, as you can see. Currently, SQL VM1 is primary node. The database called distributed DB is being synchronized. There is one table in this DB, which is table one, and uh, as you can see, there is no data inside this table. I'm connecting to primary and secondary in SSMS. Above is primary and below is secondary. Okay. Firstly, we will reproduce the issue. I have two columns in the table, call one and ID. ID works as a primary unique key. By the way, I should mention that you should have unique primary key as a prerequisite for this activity. Okay. Let's insert record 1 to our table by running this command. We will check and confirm that the record exists in primary after that. Then we will connect to secondary and also confirm the set data synced to secondary. Then we will change synchronization mode of the secondary to asynchronous. Also, we will suspend data movement in secondary so that any feather data is not synced to secondary from this point. Then we will insert record 2 to our table and confirm that it is inserted in primary. However, since we suspend the data movement to secondary, we can see that data is not synced to secondary. Now we reproduce the data loss scenario record 2 is not synced to secondary yet. Let's imagine some kind of outage happened in primary site and it became inaccessible. In this situation, what we DBAs do is to connect to secondary DR site and do manual forced failover with possible data loss. You can see data loss warning during this activity. You don't have another choice, right? You should do failover to make your application up faster. So therefore, you just click OK and do forced manual failover. Afterwards, your DR site became primary. Let's insert record 3 in new primary. In the meantime, your previous primary became online and transferred as a secondary automatically. However, as you can see, database extends a suspended mode. This always happens when you, you do forced manual failover. 
database is put in suspended mode so that you can recover your data loss. Be careful, do not resume data movement now, otherwise you lose your data forever. To recover lost data, first you create a snapshot of the database first. Okay. Afterwards, you resume data movement. Then, by using table diff utility, you compare database snapshot and current database, and this utility finds a difference. I, I usually use this command. I will leave this as note in the video description. You just need to change database name here to your database name and change server name, database name, table name properties, and file generation location in this part of the code. Okay? After running that command, you will have file generated with tsql command, which you can utilize to recover your lost data. That's all to recover lost data. Please do not forget to subscribe and thank you for your time.